next for our next tale of terror we have another reddit story from no sleep by a user called white house downs the story is entitled why i don't go trick or treating anymore My name isn't really important, but for now, I'll go by Monty. Little backstory. I grew up in a small town just outside of Hartford, Connecticut. Real nice place where everyone knew everyone. You never locked your doors. Had a real charm to it. Nicest bunch of folks you could ever meet, really. We were all one big family. So this all happened in 2005. I was 10 at the time, and my friends Adam, Timmy, and Jared were out trick-or-treating. We were, in all honesty, a bunch of little ornery shits. We weren't malicious in any way, we just liked to pull pranks here and there. Like the time we broke into old Mr. Harrison's chicken coop and replaced his eggs with Cadbury cream eggs. We left the real eggs in a basket outside the coop, so he didn't mind much in the end. Had a hell of a time cleaning the chocolate out of his hen's feathers, though. So anyway, that Halloween... We decided we would bring big pillowcases to use as our sacks. Since we knew the whole town, we were allowed out until midnight so long as we made it right on the dot and not a second later. We were all about the same age. Adam was the oldest of us at 12 and Jared was the youngest at 9. So when we heard we had almost 6 hours of time to get as much candy as we could, we were ecstatic. In our young minds, having all that time and all that space meant we'd be rolling in candy for the rest of our lives. So we went out all dressed up in homemade Avengers outfits and got to work. It hit 11 way faster than we thought it would, and by that time we were each lugging around about 20 pounds of candy. We had a lot of old couples and not many kids. Most of the older children were in their mid to late teens and saw Halloween more as an excuse to get shit-faced and have, you know, kinky costumed sex at parties. Soon enough, it was 11.40, and I knew I had to get going soon. As I turned to tell everyone I was heading home, I saw the car. Now, if you would have told me what a pedophile was when I was 10, and explained the concept thoroughly, the image I would have come up with would be an old, balding man with missing teeth and a wiry frame driving around in a beat-up, rusty van. That wasn't at all what the man who introduced himself as Reggie Smith looked like. Handsome was one word you could use. He had a thick head of dark blonde hair, slightly muscular frame, and a smile so white and perfect you could see it shining in the blackest of nights. And that's exactly what he did when he greeted us. Hey there, kids, he called out. It's getting pretty late. You should be heading home. Jared was the first one to speak up, waving his paper towel roll and cardboard mule near in a greeting. Oh, hi there, mister. We're just heading home. Jared pointed to the sack he held in his other hand. Look at all the candy we got. Reggie smiled that fucking smile of his and chuckled. That sure is a lot. Say, you kids want some more? I think I got some... Ah, here they are. After rummaging around for a bit, he pulled four king-sized Snickers bars from what I can only assume was a black medical bag he had sitting in his front passenger seat. Of course, all four of us rushed over and gladly took what we thought to be the holy grail of candy. Soon, Reggie had introduced himself and explained he had just moved in a few blocks down the road. Somehow, I picked up that something seemed off about him, to say the least. First red flag came when he invited us back to his place. I got a bunch of candy bars just sitting in a bag on my porch if you want to come get some real quick, he'd said. Now that set me off because not five minutes earlier he'd been saying how we should be getting home. Being incredibly uncomfortable, I saw it was nearly 11.50 and took that as my cue to leave. It's almost midnight and I gotta get home, sorry. Adam, Timmy, and Jared, Iron Man, the Hulk, and Thor all gave me a confused look. Seriously? Adam said, moving his mask out of the way to be heard clearly. It's free candy, dude, and really good candy, too. Yeah, Timmy called out in agreement while pounding his Hulk fists together. You can't seriously be passing this up. Sorry, guys. My parents will ground me for a month if I don't get home soon. I'll see you guys later. 
My friends all gave out a sigh of disappointment and climbed in Reggie's car. That's when Reggie spoke up. Ah, leave him alone, kids. Besides, I only have room for three right now. That's when I remembered that creepy black doctor's bag in his passenger seat. I said my goodbyes and peaced the fuck out of there. Luckily, I made it home just in the nick of time and my parents were only mildly annoyed. Soon after, my parents started checking my candy and asked how my night was. That's when I told them about Mr. Smith. And that was when my parents' faces turned white as snow. Then my dad grabbed his car keys and mom started dialing the police. Soon, I knew everything about what was really going on, and I had to give the police a statement. Of course, knowing that I was nearly kidnapped and that my friends were gone, I was a complete wreck. Once the police got their information, they tried to console me and tell me it wasn't my fault in any way. And that was when I heard their radios go off. Car 3, Car 3, suspect inbound to your location on foot. He appears to be armed and dangerous. Do you copy? This is Car 3. We copy. The officer looked me in the eyes and smiled. Don't worry, kid. We'll get this guy. He turned to his partner. Steven, stay with the kid. I'm going to cut this son of a bitch off more than he before he can get away. The other officer, Stevens, he was an absolute saint. When all this was going down, he did his damnedest to keep me calm. Stayed with us that night for security, and for that, I'm eternally grateful. Next morning, my dad came home exhausted, peeled off his dirty size 12s before crashing in his favorite chair. He and the other men of the neighborhood went out looking for Mr. Smith. They'd cornered him in one of the old abandoned manor houses, and he wound up shooting himself to avoid capture. That's the only consolation I get, knowing that if there's a hell, that fucker is rotting there. Now you're probably wondering what happened to Adam, Timmy, and Jared. Well, I'm pretty sure you could guess already, but yeah, they're all dead. Jared survived Mr. Smith, but three years later, he put a 12-gauge slug through the roof of his mouth. Things he told me about that night, what he, Adam, and Timmy went through, they'll haunt me till the day I die. A couple of you more morbid folks pro out there probably want more details, out of some dark curiosity. Well, may as well tell you the worst thing Jared told me they went through before that fucking monster cut Adam and Timmy up like animals. Once he was done using them, he took out his little black bag and started experimenting. Do you know the human heart can beat for a solid three or five minutes after being removed from the body? Not like you'd see in the movies, but atrial and ventricular fibrillations continue for quite a bit after removal. Oh, you didn't? Of course you didn't. Neither did Adam. But he found out 30 minutes after meeting Mr. Smith. Bet you also didn't know the lungs can't function if they're exposed to open air. Maybe you did, but Timmy sure as fuck didn't, and he definitely didn't deserve to go out like that. I'm 23 now, and after years of therapy and support, I have a beautiful wife and a child on the way. Once my little Teresa's born, I'm not going to let her out of my sight for a second, let alone let her go trick-or-treating. I refuse to let anything remotely like that happen to my little girl, so I'll just buy her a big bag of candy every year to keep her happy. There is one thing that continues to bother me, though. Before he killed himself, Jared said Mr. Smith didn't have a gun on him. Never had one, in fact. He did have several scalpels and medical instruments, but no firearm of any kind. The autopsy report showed Mr. Smith died after receiving a single 45 round to the side of the head from where he shot himself, it seems. And that doesn't explain is why Mr. Smith's autopsy also turned up several ruptured organs and fractures consistent with what would happen if a size 12 combat boot were to have repeatedly stomped his chest, neck, and pelvis, and why no one outside of our little town knows about what happened that Halloween night guess some questions are better off left unanswered. Alright. Thank you for tuning in. That was Why I Don't Go Trick-or-Treating Anymore by uh, White House Downs. You can find more of his work on Reddit's No Sleep. I believe I've actually not really looked.
script. He just contacted me and gave me permission to use the story, so... It's entirely possible that it's his first, but it was... Pretty good if it was. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed, and that that little chill running down your spine is as much from enjoyment as it is from terror. I'm sorry for the shortened stream tonight, but I'm having an odd day involving extreme heat and tiredness that I shouldn't be having at this time of day. So hopefully things will be more natural tomorrow and I'll be able to return with either some more creepy stories or go back to my usual gaming stuff but horrored up for Halloween. More oxen free, some Outlast or Amnesia, Fear, stuff like that. Thanks again for tuning in, and I will catch you next time.